Treasure hunters and archaeologists have been making incredible discoveries for over a thousand years. It's easy to think that there's nothing left to find, but the world is a big place and humans have lost a lot of stuff over the course of our existence. New discoveries are made every year, and today we'll be looking at five of the most incredible treasures found in recent years. Ancient Roman Silver Researchers from the Pamukkale University in Turkey were doing archaeological excavations of the ruins of Eisenoi in September of 2019. Eisenoi was an ancient Greek city located in what is now Turkey's Kutaya province. They were digging along the bank of a stream when they discovered a jug. This jug would go on to tell half of a story, leaving researchers to speculate about the other half. Inside the jug, they found 651 silver coins, including 439 ancient Roman coins and 200. 12 ancient Greek coins. The dates on the coins range from 75 BC to 4 BC. The majority of the coins were minted in southern Italy, and the find is referred to as a coin album because it encompasses a range of dates and leaders. The Roman coins feature several different figures, including Caesar, Brutus, Augustus, and Mark Antony. These faces are depicted on the front, while on the back of the coins there's a variety of different stories, some from myth and some from history. Stories told on the coins could range from epic feats of Trojan heroism to a shameless celebration of the assassination of Julius Caesar. Despite having been buried in the ground for over 2,000 years, the coins remained in incredible condition, with the text and images all remaining legible. This led to the very obvious question of how the coins wound up there in the first place. Clearly, it was intentional. The jug was filled with silver and buried on the riverbank. It is suspected that this was done by a high-ranking military officer, someone that could have been paid well enough to have such a large stash of silver. That could also explain why the coins were never retrieved if that officer were to go on and die in battle. It does, however, leave one major answered question. Why? Why was the jug buried there in the first place? We don't have an answer to that yet, and while people are free to speculate, it is unlikely that we'll ever have a definitive answer to that question. We don't know why it was buried. All we know is that lead archaeologist Elif Ozer is happy to have found it, referring to it as the most special silver coin find of recent times. After cataloging the collection of coins, the team of archaeologists sent it to the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations in Ankara to be put on display. Biblical Purple Dye There is a lot of debate among historians over how much of the Bible's text is accurate. The Bible is a really long book, so we'll forgive you if you haven't read the whole thing. But there's a lot more in it than stories of creation and prophecies of Armageddon. Much of the Old Testament is framed as being a historical account of the Israelites over a roughly 1,500 year period. Two prominent figures in the Old Testament are King David and his son, King Solomon. Not only were the tales of their exploits up for debate, but there was also a lot of debate over whether either of these kings even existed as historical figures. The discovery of the Tel Dan Stele in 1993 provided the strongest evidence at the time that King David was a real person and not meant as a metaphor or artistic license. In early 2021, a new discovery was found that was of incredible importance both for biblical scholars and historians alike. And without proper context, it sounds like the most mundane discovery imaginable. It was a piece of purple cloth buried in a slag heap in southern Israel. Fortunately, this cloth was discovered by researchers who knew not to overlook its importance. Radiocarbon dating of the fabric revealed it to be from approximately 1000 BC, corresponding to the time of David and Solomon. The Bible explicitly states that these two monarchs wore purple, a color which has long since been associated with royalty. And there's good reason for that as well. The purple dye was once more valuable than gold due to its rarity and the difficulty in producing it. Ancient purple dye was created by pulling snails out of their shells, extracting the mucus glands and then exposing them to sunlight for a precise amount of time. They couldn't just be any snail either. There were only three species of snails whose glands would produce the appropriate color. It was a painstaking process, and it could take as many as 250,000 snails to produce a single ounce of purple dye. But the results were worth it. Not for the snails, of course, as they would be dead in the process, but it was worth it for the monarchy. The dye produced was a brilliant shade of royal purple, and even after 3,000 years, the fabric had not faded one bit. 
The existence of purple fabric in the appropriate region may only be circumstantial evidence of the monarch's reigns, but regardless of any biblical implications, it is still an incredible one-of-a-kind discovery. According to Dr. Naimur Sekinek of the Israel Antiquities Authority, quote, this is the first piece of textile ever found from the time of David and Solomon that is dyed with the prestigious purple dye. This frayed piece of cloth is a major historical find, as it is the only purple textile that has ever been found that we can date back to the Iron Age. That's enough to make it absolutely priceless, even without the possible connection to biblical kings. Captain Every's Treasure Not all incredible treasures are found by professional archaeologists and treasure hunters. While the treasure found by amateur historian and metal detectorist Jim Bailey may not have been as massive in scale as some of the other treasures on this list, the incredible part was the light it shed on a 300-year-old mystery. Captain Henry Avery, also known as John Avery, among other aliases, was a notorious captain from the Golden Age of Piracy. On September 7, 1695, Avery committed his most famous act, one that has been regarded as piracy's greatest exploit. Leading a small band of pirate vessels, he approached a convoy of 25 ships from the Grand Mughal Empire on their pilgrimage to Mecca. Avery was able to capture their treasure ship, the Ganj-e-Sawai. Contemporary estimates vary wildly, with a stolen cargo ranging in value from $300,000 to $600,000 worth of jewels and precious metal. By today's valuation, it would have been worth about $50 to $100 million. But one of the reasons it's hard to estimate the value is because nobody actually knows what happened to Captain Every. A bounty was put on his head, but he and the stolen treasure vanished from all records in 1696. For over 300 years, Every's future whereabouts and movements were unknown. And that changed in 2014, when Bailey discovered his first silver coin on a farm in Middletown, Rhode Island. At first, he assumed it was either a Spanish coin or money minted by the Massachusetts Bay Colony. However, further research showed that the money was actually from 1693 in Yemen. Fifteen more Arabian coins from that time period were found in the coming years. One was found in North Carolina, while others remained in New England. It was already known that some of Captain Every's men landed in North Carolina, and it is believed that the coins found in New England likely belonged to Captain Every himself. While there is not yet definitive proof that the Yemeni coins found were included in the cargo of the Ganji Sawai, it is strongly suspected that they were. It is also believed this proves at least some of the escape route that Captain Every took between his miraculous disappearance and his death. Ancient Roman Gauls On the 23rd of August 2021, brothers-in-law Louis Lenz Pardo and Caesar Gimeno Alcala were on vacation in Axbia, a coastal Mediterranean town and tourist destination. The pair decided to rent snorkel equipment and go free diving to pick up trash to make the area more beautiful. What began as a thoughtful good deed and rather awkward choice of tourist activity quickly turned into one of the most important finds in the late Roman Empire. As they were clearing up litter, Luis noticed the glimmer of what looked like a coin at the bottom of the bay. The coin was in a small bottleneck, but he was able to retrieve it and bring it to the surface. They could immediately tell the image was either an ancient Greek or Roman face, so they swam back down to the bottleneck with a pocket knife to see if they could find anything else. In total, they pulled eight gold coins out of the bay. After cleaning the coins a little bit, they placed them in a jar of seawater and reported their find to the authorities. Archaeologists from the University of Alicante, the Solar Blasco Archaeological and Ethnological Museum, and the Spanish Civil Guard Special Underwater Brigade joined together to excavate the site. Further excavation revealed that the cache contained a total of 53 gold coins and remnants of a chest that had deteriorated over time. The coins were dated from 364 to 408 AD, and they were preserved in remarkable condition. The images and inscriptions were all clear, so researchers could easily read the names of the emperors depicted on them. This was one of the largest finds of gold coins ever, as gold coins were extremely rare. They were intended for affluent families to show off their wealth more than they were actually used as currency. Each coin weighed 4.5 grams, so the total weight of the gold bars found is worth roughly $12,000 today. With the numismatic value of the coins, the collection could easily be worth $50,000 or more. However, the treasure trove provided more than just monetary value. It was a look into life near the fall of the Roman Empire. There is no evidence of a shipwreck in the area, which has led researchers to believe that the treasure was buried intentionally and that the owner died before having a chance to retrieve it. According to James Molina Vidal, a professor of ancient history at the University of Alicante and researcher at the University Institute of Archaeology and Historical Heritage, quote, The find speaks to us of a context of fear, a world that is ending, that of the Roman Empire. San Jose Galleon 
The San Jose was a 64-gun galleon that was part of the Spanish Armada. The ship originally launched in 1698 as part of the Spanish treasure fleet during the War of Spanish Succession. Its final voyage was in 1708 when it sailed alongside three Spanish warships and 14 merchant vessels from Panama to Colombia. On June 8, 1708, the San Jose and its fleet encountered a British fleet led by the Isla de Barrio off the coast of Colombia. The battle was a complete rout, with only 14 injured or killed on the side of the British, compared to over 1,000 200 on the side of the Spanish. It may not have been such a one-sided battle were it not for a very strange turn of events. The San Jose was approaching one of the British ships. They had 600 men and clearly intended to board the British ship. The San Jose closed within 60 meters of the enemy ship before suddenly exploding. The gunpowder stores on the ship caught fire and the ship immediately sank. All but 11 of the crew members went down with the ship that was filled with gold, jewels, and other treasures. For over 300 years, the San Jose and its riches would lie on the bottom of the ocean completely undisturbed. Then, on June the 6th, 2022, the Colombian Navy released a press release. They had found the sunken wreck in 2015 and were finally ready to reveal its existence to the world. Unsurprisingly, they weren't interested in telling anyone exactly where the wreck was. The Colombian government maintains that they have ownership of the vessel as it was found in Colombian waters. The Spanish government naturally has stake to claim as well, seeing as it was their ship. But the matter of ownership becomes even more complicated when taking into account that much of the cargo of the ship is believed to have been stolen from South American countries, all of whom want back their fair share. It's no surprise that any party that could claim ownership would want to, since the San Jose has been referred to as the holy grail of sunken ships. The ship was carrying 200 tons of treasure, including gold, silver, emeralds, jewelry, swords, and much more. Even the guns from the ship itself have value as important historic artifacts. The San Jose is the most expensive sunken treasure ever found, and it's not even close. Before this discovery, the most expensive sunken ship came in as around $500 million worth of treasure. The wreck of the San Jose is worth an estimated $17 billion. In surveying the shipwreck, the Colombian Navy identified two other sunken ships in the area that are suspected to be from the 1800s, but the San Jose will of course remain the top story. At 34 times the value of the next most expensive sunken treasure, the San Jose is not just the most incredible treasure found recently, it is the most incredible sunken treasure ever found.